errors were made in the hours following King Viserys' death. The war be fought. Many will die, and the victor will eventually ascend the throne. There's a war between kin. There is no war so hateful to the gods. And no war so bloody as a war between dragons. Welcome back, everyone. Happy New Year. House of the Dragon Season 2 is coming finally. They released another trailer. We learned some more about the season and their plan for the rest of the series. George R. R. Martin also posted a bunch of updates for all the other spinoffs and prequel series because it is the end of the year to me posting this video, so he did a big roundup. We also learned about a couple other new alternate endings to the original Game of Thrones series, confirming some fan theories everybody's had for a long time. So of course we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll be doing more season two videos as we get more details and more trailers for the series. It will be airing in 2024, thankfully. They also announced their casting for the Night of the Seven Kingdoms prequel series about the tales of Duncan Egg. So it sounds like we might actually get that series and those episodes relatively soon. But that'll be a completely separate thing, not really connected to what's happening on House of the Dragon. That's like a completely separate show. It sounds like they're planning for that show to fill the gaps between House of the Dragon seasons. So that in the future, we don't have long stretches of time like the years and years between House of the Dragon or Game of Thrones seasons, however you want to think about it. We also got a little more Kragen Stark. He is going to debut during season two, but he's not in this trailer. They're probably saving him for one of like the final trailers because he's a huge character. They confirmed that he is being played by Tom Taylor, who also himself posted a few videos thanking everyone and being hyped for his debut during season two. Before I go to sleep, I just uh, thought I'd say thank you to um, everyone who's messaged and commented and, and just been really welcoming about my involvement in House of the Dragon. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm knackered, but thanks. One of the funny things about his clips is some of you probably realize he is a natural blonde. Like, wait a minute, wouldn't that make him seem like a Targaryen? Is this meant to be like a weird Jon Snow reference or something? More likely, when they filmed his scenes, they either dyed his hair brunette, like Stark brunette, or they just had him wear a wig. I do not think he's going to be blonde during the actual season. That would just confuse so many people. Like, what are they trying to tell us here? Like, is there some secret plot in play? Is he secretly a Targaryen like Jon Snow? Based on all the books, Craig and Stark is Stark brunette. But just starting with the alternate ending, some of these are actually pretty cool. The first big one is actually the Night King coming to King's Landing with his army of White Walkers and Whites in what looks like would have happened around Episode 4, Episode 5, maybe just based on the timing of how everything goes down. This is assuming that Season 8 was only ever going to be six episodes total. I believe a fan actually put that footage together because some of it is taken from the actual episode 5 and episode 6 events. I definitely think it would have made for a much better climax to the Long Night story arc and done a better job of setting up Daenerys' turn as she slowly goes mad and then eventually turns on King's Landing herself. But the other alternate ending actually confirms a long-running fan theory and it comes from Lita Headey, Cersei herself, and this is specific for Cersei's ending. Recently, she revealed that when they were actually filming season eight a couple years ago, she and Maisie Williams had a version of Cersei's ending that was basically a fan theory that most of us had for Cersei's ending for a long time. Like even leading up to season eight, there were a lot of theories about how they'd end her storyline. Turns out they were thinking what we were all talking about. She said their version of Cersei's ending during the finale, instead of being killed by the collapsing Red Keep itself, like crushed by stones, during the finale, Arya was going to have killed Jaime. Like, we wouldn't actually see that happen. She would just take his face, wearing his face, then sneak into the Red Keep, 
And in a moment like this, Arya kills Cersei while still wearing Jaime's face so that we, the audience, as we're watching the episode, see Jaime killing Cersei. There's like a big WTF reaction like, oh my god, he killed her, what happened? And then Arya rips her face off, revealing that it's her to Cersei as she lay bleeding out. Sort of like the way that she entered season 7 with that Frey pie scene. First the WTF moment happens, then she rips the face off, revealing that it's her. So it would have been a moment like that season 7 episode 1 moment, like the Starks send their regards. I already did a couple videos about the other deleted scenes and alternate endings from Game of Thrones season 8, so I'll add links for those videos at the end of this and down in the description below, because it was such a big season, there were so many things that hit the cutting room floor. But moving to the House of the Dragon season 2 trailer, there are a couple moments we learn more about. In the trailer, you see Rhaenyra mount Cyrax angrily after the scene, looking out over Shipbreaker Bay after hearing the news of Lucerus's death, RIP. This moment is meant to be picking up right after this scene here of her learning of her son's death. It looks like in the trailer, she's actually going to mount Cyrax and fly to Shipbreaker Bay around Storm's End, actually looking for Lucerus's body herself which isn't a moment from the original Fire and Blood book. There are like a lot of moments they include on the show that weren't in the original book for a lot of different reasons. In the books, they made it sound like the reason why she learned of her son's death, like the reason why the news reached her at all is because his body already washed up on shore, so they'd already found his body. But this also gets into like the rest of the show too, because there will be other moments that were not in the original book. You have to remember that the original Fire and Blood book isn't written from the POV perspective like the original A Song of Ice and Fire novels. But in Fire and Blood, it's actually a book that's written by Maesters after the fact and taken from accounts from Mushroom, the court fool. George R. R. Martin and the showrunners have talked about this, so the whole idea is that the Maester that actually wrote the book is very green-leaning, so already he kind of didn't like Rhaenyra in the Blacks. There were a lot of moments from history that they got wrong or they weren't privy to, like there weren't actual people there seeing what actually happened, what the characters said to each other. So it'd be kind of like somebody writing a biography about somebody else without actually having been there or talked to the person to get a first person account of what actually happened. That's meant to explain some of the discrepancies, so the show is meant to fill in a lot of those gaps like, no, 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 this is what really happened. They've also addressed this on the show too. Part of the idea is that the victor always writes history and it's always their account of history. So those accounts of history always tend to favor the victors and not be totally accurate to what history actually was. We got a couple new scenes of Corliss Valerian inside the map table room. It's almost empty. There's probably another person that he's speaking with here. He's still a very important character in season two, and they kind of teased his role at the end of season one, the finale, some of his character turns. Most of his season two is using his fleet to blockade Blackwater Bay, the other key ports that the Greens might otherwise use along the eastern seaboard, basically controlling this whole eastern seaboard for the Blacks. He's involved in a really huge WTF battle called the Battle of the Gullet. It sounds like they've actually pushed that to season three. There've been a bunch of questions about that. They changed season two. It's only eight episodes now instead of 10. And I think it's because they decided to move the Battle of the Gullet to season three, mostly because they want to do a much bigger version of it. And they just didn't have the budget for it or the time to address it in a way that they wanted to. Like they would have had to do like 12 or 13 episodes to do it right during season two. I think they also decided to move it so they could open season three with some epic WTF action the way they're going to do with season two, episode one in Blood and Cheese. Very different kind of action, very different type of WTF moment, but all the same, just opening it as strongly as possible. And the Battle of the Gullet is basically the bloodiest sea battle in the history of Westeros, so you can imagine that they want to spend way more time on it. The other big reminder too, and they kind of got into this during the finale, is the sea snake implied in that season one finale that neither he nor Princess Rhaenys really trusted Rhaenyra that much anymore and seemed like he kind of soured on her just in general. But currently, the best option for their family, like their part of the family, the Valerians, was to support her over the Greens. They're going to continue to be moments like that in season two that will cause Corliss to question his loyalty to Rhaenyra. That will just inform what happens with him in season three and just season three in general for all the characters. In a very Game of Thrones fashion, over the course of all these seasons, like over the course of the Dance of the Dragons, alliances shift and change constantly. It would not be the Game of Thrones universe if people weren't backstabbing each other or switching sides all the time. Also, too, Corliss Valerian is getting his own spinoff, although it might be played by a completely different character. George R. R. Martin was gushing about Blue-Eyed Samurai, like some other cool animated projects right now, saying that the Sea Snake Nine Voyages series that they were working on is now moving to become an adult animation series. 
I don't know if this means it's going to be 2D looking animation, kind of like Invincible, because that's an amazing series, or it'll be 3D animation, more like Blue-Eyed Samurai. Either way, I am really excited about the idea of an adult animation Game of Thrones series. And George R. R. Martin said one of the reasons why they moved it to animation is just for budgetary reasons, because they want to go to so many places around the world, and it's just hard to do that in live action. I've already talked about all the blood and cheese scenes during the trailer. I don't want to get too deep into that because it is kind of spoilery. Remember, that'll be like the first couple of episodes of season two. I've already talked about Kristen Cole wearing the chain of the Hand of the King and how he becomes Hand of the King, basically taking Otto Hightower's job. That'll inform everything that happens later in the season with the Battle of Duskendale and Rook's Rest. Rook's Rest will be like the really big battle in the middle of the season, but it is in the middle of the season. We'll get a couple more trailers before season two actually gets here. I'm not expecting them to drop like a big Super Bowl trailer or anything like that, but there should be some more promos pretty soon. Whatever they wind up releasing and whatever we wind up hearing about the other spinoff shows, of course I'll do videos. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up, so if you have any big questions about what's going on with the trailers or the new series, just write them in the comments below and I'll add them to my bonus videos. While you wait for everything, click here for my full House of the Dragon Season 2 trailer video and Easter eggs, and click here for that Game of Thrones Night of the Seven Kingdoms teaser trailer and learn what's going on with that show. Thank you so much for watching, Happy New Year everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next one.